Uh, I'm gonna do a commentary for the uh, the 25 ruby that I did earlier this week. Uh, with obviously the same group that I've been pushed that I pushed with last week and this week. Um, this is our first key this week. With, or no, no, this is our third key other than a Shadow Moon and a Court. All right, I did pull up pounce. Uh, so this is on Tyrannical Week. It is Tyrannical Bolsering. Uh, What's the last affix? Volcanic, yeah. Bolstering, volcanic, thundering, tyrannical, obviously. Um, so these are my talents for the ruby. Um, there's a few things you actually need for ruby. You would want to, well, you don't need them, but beneficial. Um, spell steel is pretty good. Um, I decided not to take Dragon's Breath for this key. Um, I, sp I decided to go for the time manipulation. Um, it, this is kind of just, I'm taking this for more damage. Um, I am taking Temporal Warp. I'm not taking Time Anomaly. Um, and Dragon's Breath isn't really needed for this key. The only thing you really need to enter, or that you can use stuns for, are the Cinder Weavers um, in the upper ring. And then you need to interrupt the Tectonic Slams in the part in the first portion. But you can just oh, you can just use Blast Wave for that. Um, Another part of the reason why this you don't need Dragon's Breath is because since Tyrannical Week, you're not running Frostbite. Um, a major downside to Frostbite is Blast Wave doesn't work with any mobs that are frozen from Frostbite. Um, so if you are only running Blast Wave when you're running Frostbite, you need to be careful that you're not um, betting on Blast Wave actually working to interrupt the mobs. Um, because again, like I said, if anything is frozen by Frostbite, then uh, it doesn't they won't get interrupted. Uh, so for a talent tree, obviously they're just the typical tyrannical build, running Winter Tide, running Slick Ice, uh, and Splintering Cold. Um, other than that, it's just the general mage tree. Um, I think, uh, I'm not, <laughs> um, very interesting enough. Um, I actually forgot. I think I forgot to file this entire key. This year. Um, so I don't think I actually have a file on it. Normally, I would go either the first file or Elemental Chaos. You could go Corrupting Rage, but um, I just haven't used it yet. But uh, yeah, I think I just completely forgot to run. Um, to run a, a, a file this key. Um, the reasoning behind the skip at the beginning, so we obviously don't have a rogue, uh, so people were pre-invis potting, and then we're using a roar to get past that first mob. Um, I was doing something weird. I'm, I used G-invis to use that instead of normal invis, because uh, we have a strat that we had to use here to get past. Um, so there's a mob. Um, I'll actually show you an MDT. This mob in Ruby... Right here, this uh, flash, so two weaver seven. Um, since they're casting, there's actually no possible way for you to like mind soothe. Uh, and since we don't have a rogue that can just like shroud us past, we needed to find some way to skip it. Um, so the strat that we're using is we're polymorphing and then mind soothing because polymorph obviously stops the uh, the cast. Um, and then after the po polymorph, you mind soothe and you can just walk past him like normal. Um, so the reasoning I used. Um, G invis at the at the start is because if I use G invis to get past him instead of just normal invis, because uh, I might I may need to reset with invis do the invis tech to reset mobs, um, the poly invis tech. Uh, I wouldn't have G invis for the boss if I happen to use it in this case. Uh, so that's why I use G invis in the start instead. Um, but other than that, obviously just the typical area rotation, um, keeping Blizzard up as much as possible. Uh, since the, I do have Blast Wave, I am Blast Waving the Tectonic Slams. I'm also targeting them, the, uh, the Earth Shapers, just because it's something that can wipe the group. Like this Tectonic Slam, you saw all of us just get wrecked by one of them. Um, luckily I had sp stolen one of the Ice Shields from the mobs. Um, so the Chill Weavers cast Ice Shields on targets. Um, and as a mage, you can spell steal them and it gives you a pretty, a pretty pretty large shield uh, you can tell your group not to interrupt ice shield if you want but it's not too big of a deal um it, they're pretty big they're pretty big shields for you to, to spell steal 
Um, I think I spell steal this, this one in this group next. So you'll see how much it actually spell steals. So you see how much health the shield is for him. And I spell steal it. And it's it's obviously over my health bar. So for him as a almost a 6 million health mob. And it took over like a third of his health. It's probably like a 2 million health shield. So I literally just don't have to worry about taking damage at all this pull. Which is, uh, which is very nice. I literally can just get hit by any mechanic and I don't care. Obviously, I'm not trying to get hit by mechanics, but, you know, shit happens. But, um, obviously, again, AoE rotation, blizzard uptime. If you're not blizzarding a frozen orb, you're using your fingers of frost box. Um, for me, instead of an AoE, especially in mass AoE, um, I'm sending Ice Nova, especially because I'm running time manipulation. Uh, Ice Nova is very good for one shattering. It shatter can shatter both your blizzard and your frozen orb. And it's obviously, it's, uh, I'm not sure if it's a bug or just not done correctly. Um... I believe it has uncapped AoE. It doesn't correctly scale. It says it's, it's supposed to be reduced damage beyond a certain amount of targets, um, but I don't think it currently do actually does. So, obviously, I'm, I can't use Lust here, especially on Tyrannica weeks. We're saving Lust for first boss. Interrupting as many of the ice bolts as you can. Otherwise, just typical airy rotation, like I said. Um, I shouldn't have frost bolted there. I probably should have just went into a flurry, a uh, an unproc, an, a unshattered flurry. Um, so we did actually get a good pet here for the from the big mob that we're skipping. Uh, so this is where we use the poly mind soothe tech. I have to poly it. We go into a mind soothe, and then we can actually end this past, or just run past. Um, mind soothe by itself again doesn't work because the mob is casting. So. You you have to do some form of CC. Um, and prison, sap, anything like those work. But I did use invis just in case. Um, I wanted to make sure that I actually didn't aggro him. None of us were in combat, so I it basically oh. I knew it would have worked. But uh, I just wanted to be safe and would rather have us rather have me go through invis than uh, have that mob come to us. Unfortunately, I went into this this pull with basically nothing going. I had no ice, I had icy veins that was just about to expire. Um, for this boss, I wouldn't really say anything. Uh, I would try not to start with frozen orb on pull for the boss because you won't get it for the vault phase. Um, but I like using frozen orb at least for this mob when you do them, so that it's obviously set on it's uh, it goes on cooldown. I probably should have icy veins as well. Uh, there's no real reason for me to be holding icy veins here. Uh, you should be stacking in melee here for the hailstorms. Uh, I also tried staying in between uh, in by my rune of power, which is unfortunately under these hell these uh, hell bombs. But uh, so for every single one of these chill storms, you want to be using some form of defensive. Um, for me, maj majority of the time, that's either I'm altering, um, I'm barrier and imaging, and using a blink for a small shield, um, but some form of defensive. So I have images up here. I actually didn't use anything other than barrier and image for that one. Also, you shouldn't be use earlier in a lot of rubies. I had been blinking. I had been blinking and then altering back to my location. I would not recommend that. I would just run to the outside and blink back. Um, because you normally need alter. I used alter here for a defensive. Um, obviously altered back to full health. I just altered when I got back to the middle. Uh, I'm saving my Ice Blood Death Snare Trinket here for the first set of whelps. I also used my own personal loss for this first set. Now for this, obviously you're going to need defensives for the welt phase itself because there's a lot of damage going out. 
Um, I'm obviously going in. I don't have mirror images up anymore, so I went in with... I used a barrier. Other than that, a lot of it is just hoping your healer can actually keep you up. We actually kind of blasted the shield, so I actually didn't really have to use anything else. Um, a lot of the time, you're going to want to just have your defensives for the chill storms themselves. Um, and just hope your healer has cooldowns for chill storm. Or for the, uh, the intermissions. Uh, so you see I altered this one. I like to game it a lot. Um, there is one downside is my timers. Okay, I'm skipping this song. No, what did I do? I'm going back. I guess we're not skipping the song. My timers don't actually show me when Chillstorm goes off. Uh, it just shows me the next cast of it. Um, so that's not great. So I'm kind of just gaming to see how much health I can actually lose before alter timing back. Um, I knew basically as soon as I reached like the 40, 50, or the 50 percent mark, if I uh, didn't alter time back and go back to full health, I was definitely just dead. Uh, so I altered time back when I was 50 and went back to, to full. Um, I still ended up getting dropped to 42 percent health, but still fine. Uh, I stayed back here. I casted my rune of power, so I'm just kind of getting the value as much value as my rune of power as I can get. Now this chill storm, I don't really have any defenses for it. I'm assuming I G invis for it. Nope, I used nothing and died. I should have G invis. So uh, yeah, there's a uh, a good a good uh, a good th even post post key. I'm realizing I should have G invis. Uh, I know looking back at this, that, uh, that chills, that, that chill storm overkilled me by like th 700 and that 700 would have been done by my verse file. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that one's all fully on me. Uh, so I'm not actually doing something in this key that I did, that I've been starting to do. Um, in the mage general, general tree, there's actually a talent. No, we're not showing that against rings. No worries. <laughs> um, you did a burst heal and it didn't hit me? Did I die? Okay, wait. Uh. What is this? How is everyone full and then there's me? What? Alright, we can blame Springs. Everyone blame Springs for my death. He didn't hit me with his heal. And then Eyes is just sitting here, just vibing. But we'll continue. Uh, in hindsight, I should have just been wearing a verse flask, and you know that would have solved that issue. I would not have died. Um, obviously on this on this one, I'm using both uh, mirror and barrier. Um, oh, like I was going into before. Um, for every single chill storm, if you can, if you're not the one that actually got it, uh, you should blink because in the general tree, blink actually gives you a shield. Um, obviously it's a small shield, but obviously any, de any defensive that you can do, use it. Um, so yeah. Would have been very, it's, it's a, it's a good thing to do. Obviously it's not great for damage. It's oh. This is one thing I love. Tell me where this thundering circle is. You see a thundering circle anywhere? Tell me where tell me where this thundering circle is, please. I'd really like to know. It literally just doesn't exist, but we'll continue. I saw it, I saw it under the water in the replay. You can see it. You can see it right there. But look how hidden that thing is. You literally cannot see that. But thank you, Blizzard. I'm glad I had 6% health left. Here, I obviously have uh, I have images rolling. 
And obviously just the full AoE. Um, our AoE is still very good for uh, single target. We have good prior damage. Um, so obviously just keep your AoE up because obviously these, these whelps need to die anyways. But... Uh, Chill Storm, I should be using some defensive here. I used Barrier. Dude, I'm not using G Invis. What am I doing? So, I'm pretty sure the only reason I survived on that one is because I got the Blink Shield. I used Barrier for this one. I probably should have used more. I'm just not using my defensives. I have an ice blocked. In hindsight, my defensive usage of this fight was dog shit. Okay, so I altered here on this sprint on this one. Dude, why is this song so like so loud and unnecessarily loud? But well, whatever, we'll continue. True, spring's too good. Uh, be very careful and don't greed a cast in the chill storm. Um, I did that on a few keys today. I was running some some rubies with a friend, and uh, reading a cast on a twenty four ruby will uh, will one will one shot you. So uh, don't do that. Don't uh, don't do that. <laughs> did I use G invis? Nope, I just had faith. Okay, so uh, in hindsight, uh, I had very bad defensive usage. The only thing I was using liberally was my barrier and my uh, mirror image. Um, other than that, I didn't use a single ice block. I didn't use G invis. Um, I wasn't blinking for the shield. Um, I was altering pretty frequently, so that's good. But you can, I think, I think you can alter every other one. Oh, is this where I go back and I look at my death? Here's my death. Here's my death in Chillstorm. A nice, a nice big 704 overkill. So uh, again, wearing a, uh, wearing a first flask would have solved that issue. But yeah, defensively for that boss, just go, you want to be, uh, going through all of your defensives pretty, pretty liberally. Um, whether you're ice blocking a chill storm, I wouldn't recommend ice blocking intermission. Uh, if you need to ice block chill storms and leave your, um, leave your GM business and stuff like that for intermissions if you have to. But, uh, yeah. You should always have a barrier for every single chill storm. You should always have your, your blink shield every chill storm. Okay, wait. If, I, if I'm remembering cor this correctly, don't I double pull this pack on accident? Uh, okay, so for this mob right here, the rolling thunders that go out, uh, if you can, try and spread out because rolling thunder does damage based on how close you are to your allies. Uh, so if you get rolling thunder, try and get away from the group. Spring's so loyal. Not making me leave my room to clear, uh... To clear thundering. Oh. I'm doing the, uh, the very min maxi thing here of using your Frostbolt Flurry and doing Ice Lance into Shifting Power. Uh, cause like I said previously, um, Shifting Power benefits from Winter's Chill, but doesn't actually consume the stack. Um, so you can get your shifting power to have an increased crit chance without actually consuming the stack. Okay, the one thing that I would say is if you get rolling thunder, do not ice block. 
because it will obviously dispel the debuff and we'll do the same sort of damage that dispelling it actually does so like our healer dispelled our warrior who got it um and obviously we all got chunked for damage uh ice block will do the same thing so uh don't do that Obviously, again here, use your defensive pretty liberally, um, basically keeping 100%. Well, I'm trying to use it mirror image as much as possible. Um, if you can, a very min maxi thing is you can alter time the original Inferno hit, or you can alter time many of the other hits as well. Um, I sometimes like saving alter time for the living bomb itself, but I'm pretty healthy here, so I didn't worry about it. Um, if you're low or like not like, so this this is when I alter timed. I'm pretty sure I take another tick and then alter back. Yeah, I altered back. Um, very beneficial to do. You can obviously take the Inferno hit and then alter a few of the hits. <laughs> hey, uh, Eyes, we want to talk about this? What'd you do here? You're, you're griefing my icy veins. Alright, so this is the pack. Uh, I know I went over this in my spell steal video. Um, I wouldn't recommend the sin and all the Cinder Weavers, they cast a something called Burning Ambition, which gives them a haste buff and a damage reduction or a damage increase. Um, I wouldn't really recommend taking it on any pack except for this pack itself, and then there's one other pack on the opposite side. Don't spell steal it on any of the packs that have the Infernos in it, because obviously that will cause you to take increased damage from the Destroyers, the Inferno casts, and obviously Living Bomb. Um, but here it's pretty good because there's really nothing that you're going to be taking damage from unless you get hit by um, a Cinder Bolt or you don't interrupt Flame Dance. Um, but otherwise, it's a very good time for you to use it. Um, you can leave it on the mob. There's no real downside to it. Other, than It'll make the, that mob die quicker, um, but it will give you the haste buff. Um, so obviously you're going to get more benefit from the haste uh, in an AoE pack than obviously an enemy will. Uh, well, it's really more so is haste more beneficial to you than the increased damage on the Cinderweaver, which in most cases um, it is. Oh, here is where I realized that uh, I'm not filed, I think. Yep, there's my file. I got my file off. Good me, good me. Um, for these, you always want to bring the living bombs into melee or into the casters themselves. Um, that interrupts flame dance, it interrupts Cinderbolt. It's basically a free AoE interrupt. Um, it obviously does put them on the, uh, it does DR them. It does stun DR them. Um, but it's obviously something that you don't have to cast yourself. Uh, for these, the Flame Dancers, you can actually spell steal them as a mage. It does nothing other than, obviously, just get rid of the buff, which I obviously spell steal it. Uh, all, it all they do is they obviously do the spinning and they're shooting the fire. Um, it just makes it so it stops that cast. We uh, we learned from our mistakes in the last ruby that we did, and uh, we're not pulling the fire dragon by accident. So, uh, you know, props to there. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to actually lust again. I would technically be able to get my lust up here if I use shifting power. Um, but it looks like I am shifting. Yeah, I am shifting powering here. I'd be able to use it, but if I do lust now, um, then uh, I wouldn't have it up for the group for the second boss. So I'm, I'm having to hold it. I to save lust. Yeah, I just said I have to save lust.
Hey, we all know we all know who to point fingers at now for the uh, for the fire dragon. We looked back at it. We went and did, we we did the research. Okay, so there is a tech here if the dragon is actually um, on the ground and there's obviously you can't really get past him there is a way that you can get past him right here uh, by the tree you can just jump past him unfortunately if you pull any of the scorchlings um, he, they will social pull the dragon so that's not recommended if you have a priest or a rogue you can mind soothe this infuser and mind soothe and go behind the tree or you can obviously shroud behind the tree or in this um, Right here, I was calling for mind, mind Soothe, but our priest was uh, getting some mana back, so. Springs obviously did uh, did not hear me calling for Mind Soothe, but it doesn't really matter. The uh, the dragon is going away right now anyway, so. Obviously, you need to run through this whole pack and uh, get to the next one because you need to make sure you're not pull the dragon on its pat back. I should be focusing the destroyer here instead of the cinder weaver, but uh, I'm not because I'm bad. Especially with uh, with bolstering. Uh, sorry, especially with bolstering. If you bolster the destroyer, he uh, he hurts, as you can see by this inferno. Uh, so in that one, I actually probably should have just ice blocked. Um, I was pretty low going into the cache itself. Um, I saw an inferno coming out. I was on high health. I mirror imaged here as a defensive. Um, obviously, use your defensives liberally here. Uh, I could have ice blocked the initial hit of the inferno. I thought we were actually skipping this. Also, I get stuck on flowers here all of a sudden. Again, this is another this is another pack that you can uh, spell steal the burning ambition on because there's no infernos. I'll uh, I'll go back and show you after uh, after I'm done, guys. Um, but the reason you can do it on this pack is there's only cinder bolts going off. There's no inferno. Um, obviously it's just kicks. Um, it's not too big of a deal if you get hit by one cinder bolt. But obviously the, the haste buff is pretty big for you in, in these packs. Alright, so the most important thing for this boss is you want to be baiting the... Uh... It's very important for you to actually know the timings for all the mechanics for this fight. Knowing when uh, Blaze Binding is going to be spawning versus a boulder because all of them need to be baited properly basically one bad bait for either of them will uh will basically kill you it will basically wipe the whole group so you need to be very aware of what's happening i'm um, again for this especially on this is two target now um i know it does feel weird especially when you don't have the instant casts but technically on two target as a frost mage you should be blizzarding um so i'm kind of just blizzarding on cooldown here And now you see the boulder cast that's coming out in three seconds. We should all be baiting on the back side of this, making sure that the boulder goes in the opposite direction. It went on me, so that's good. Uh, this basically leaves that all the space that we're going to won't be getting any of the boulder the boulder flames from it. Um, and now blaze binding, you typically want to be baiting the blaze binding in front of where you're going, um, so that it gives you space to work with. Like me, I'm I'm working ahead, starting to work ahead for the blaze binding cast. Um, it did go, ended up going behind, which isn't great, but it's better than nothing. And now during this, a Molten Boulder will be going off. So it's important, again, that you really get good baits here. You see me moving over to the side, hoping that I bait the Boulder. The Boulder did get baited over here. 
be very careful of these boulders, especially if they're going to hit any of the obstacles. You see it, it hits this tree and it goes right here. So I was incredibly close to just dying from that boulder cast. Um, so be very, be very careful of those. Yeah, we got a good boulder. Boulder going to uh, the side. And now it's going to be a blaze binding cast. Should be baiting it. You see I'm moving closer to the group for the blaze binding. It did spawn on me. A good boulder baited behind us. Basically, like I said earlier, one bad boulder and the group gets screwed. So uh, you have to be very vigilant and aware of uh, what casts are going to be happening. Again, good bait. Boulder into the side. Baiting the blaze binding now on the group. So a lot of the times I am pre-blizzarding so that as soon as the mob is actually up, I can actually just switch to single targeting it. Uh, I would recommend that. Alright, so for this one, I actually ice blocked that last cast. If you ice block the... I'll go back and we can go over that. You can ice... If you ice block the Inferno cast, you obviously take no damage initially and you don't get the dot on you. Um, so the healer called for a personal on this one, so I ice blocked. It basically made it so that I didn't get the actual Inferno debuff and I took no damage from it and now I can just full focus on damage. Also very good because I was in room this time. Um, and at Thundering, so I can just fully focus on damage. You see again, moving to the side, because I know a boulder's coming. Boulder spaded to me on the side. You do have to be very aware. Uh, you saw a few seconds ago the... Infuser is rather close on this side. You have to be careful. You're not going to actually uh, aggro the infuser. I have a very bad habit of getting hit by uh, volcanics. So, uh, yeah, that's not uh, something I could, you know, improve on. <laughs> but as you see, as I say that, a blaze binding cast, I should be moving in front of it. And now I should be baiting a boulder. If that boulder went on me, that was a pretty bad bait because the path curves around here. That's a good, a good the boulder didn't go on me. A good boulder, another good boulder bait behind us. Baiting Blaze Binding in front. I am, again, not using my defenses very liberally. I should be. Um, I know I'm using Barrier, but I'm not really using G-Invis. I'm not using Alter that well. I have used it some, but not as much as I should be. Um, this fight's very damage. There's a, a lot of damage going on in this, in this fight, so... Good fight. It's a very good fight for Frost Mage. It's basically two target cleave almost the entire fight, um, which is obviously one of Frost's strengths. Um, now for this second portion, um, would very much recommend spell stealing the shields from these guys all the time. Um, what it does is it shields, is it uh, drops you to 65 or 75 percent of your uh, of your health. So, but it basically gives you a massive shield. The only thing is you need to be aware of the crackling detonation that goes off from it. I know I definitely uh, scare some healers because, you know, going into a pack and immediately seeing a ranged at 35% health is uh, not great. So uh, I apologize, Springs, if you're watching. <laughs> I probably scare you with this. I am kind of prioritizing my ice lances over my blizzard, which I shouldn't be. I should be prioritizing my blizzard recast over. 
Um, but especially for these packs, it's very important you do get these spell steals off. You basically take no damage from this, the Tempest Channeler uh, during his Lightning Storm. You'll see I still have the shield right now and my shield debuff here. And the entire of the Lightning Storm is basically taken up. I, I guess I do eat two ticks of my health. Two ticks of my health are my actual health versus... Which is something that we don't have to worry about at all. So it's it's obviously very beneficial to uh, actually get those spell steals off. Because it's, it's healing that doesn't need to be done. Uh, and these packs, especially the oldest first pack, uh, the flame channelers are very important to interrupt. Uh, I think we do end up calling that we need to double this pack. Um, which is a little sus, but we end up doing it. Um, kind of glad we did because we ended with, we didn't really end up with much time. Um, unfortunately, literally all of us kicked this first flame channeler, which was uh, a little rough because we had no kicks for the second one. Um, there is something that kind of went back wrong on this on this next flash fire. So this flash fire is on me. Um, I do have a shield, but. I probably should have ice blocked. Um, it definitely would have been. It would have been okay to ice block. Um, I probably should have. My only reasoning behind not ice blocking is typically I want both ice blocks for the final boss, uh, just from the amount of damage that actually goes out. Um, I don't think I actually end up using both ice blocks on last boss, but um, that's kind of my my plan is to have that. It was just really unlucky that all of us kicked that first one. Um, but you can ice block that flash fire and it stops the cast. If you do get the flash fire and you don't have any kicks, do exactly what I did. Run out of your group. Uh, running into the group, the flash fire will actually... Any damage that flash fire does actually heals the, fla the flame channeler mob. Um, so if you do get it, just run out. And it'll, he literally won't, it'll only heal for the damage on you versus any damage that goes on your allies as well. And again, here I have this spell. I have this a uh, shield from the orbs or from the uh, the mobs, and I basically took like no damage. Be very careful with the thunder channeler or the tempest channelers here, especially during bolstered weeks. Um, obviously, it's gonna this is this will change week by week. But if you bolster this guy during his lightning his lightning channel, uh, that thing will fuck. So uh, <laughs> be very careful with that. This pull is definitely very scary, especially on uh, on bolstered week, because um, obviously you're going to be killing those two the two smaller mobs before you kill the big mob. Uh, it just happens that way. Um, obviously, I, on this pack you uh, don't spell steal at all. Um, so what happens on this pack is the high channeler um, he takes shields from any any mobs around him, both ally or friendly. So if you end up do actually spell stealing the shield, and then he casts his uh, his Tempest Storm Shield and takes them all, he'll then take your shield and you'll just be left at the 35% bare health. Uh, so never spell steal on this pack specifically. The other ones, it's perfectly fine to do it because there's nothing that'll actually steal the shields. Um, I did alter on this pack. Uh, you have alter for almost every, every other one of his storms. Um, but yeah. I do end up having to save Lust here, um, because I could have obviously Lusted a little earlier, but I am saving it to make sure that we actually have it as a group. Um, unfortunately, obviously I can't get full value out of my double Lust, but... Uh, one good thing is you can AoE purge them, not spell steal, but purge them. If, you know, the Priest MDs or you have, uh, you know, a Demon Hunter or anything like that, you can, you can purge them and it will obviously reduce the shield. Uh, so for this one, since we had barrier, he was double bolstered, but since we had barrier down, I decided not to use uh, my alter time. I wanted to kind of save it for the next one. I'm assuming we're going to get another shield. Um, AoE is actually very important in this. While the high channeler is the prio mob, uh, you do want to damage the shields down as much as possible um, because the shields obviously are what give him the shield. Uh, I was very scared when we actually pulled this in because we pulled this in bef right before he did his Tempest Storm Shield, which was... Uh, a little sus, but uh, I also told him to save. I didn't know there was the one mob in the back. Um, luckily, there was. 
The reason I tell him to save is because we get a free shield for the boss if we do save. You'll see me going to get it now. Having this massive shield for the boss basically just makes it so during all of the interrupting uh, cloud castings, the healer actually doesn't need to worry about my health at all. I think I end up going through like three of the interrupting spell castings before I actually take any damage. I'm here again, obviously same thing as the second boss, it's two target cleave the entire time. You should be full prior targeting the dragon here. Um, the dragon is the one that does all the dangerous mechanics. Uh, he puts all the flame spits and everything on you, so the faster you kill the dragon the better. Uh, the trick for this boss as well is the flame spits go out and the winds happen in a counterclockwise direction every single time. Um, so you want to be putting the flame spits counterclockwise. Uh, so the first one you, you're putting on the left hand side. So the first wind will happen and it'll actually push them towards the front of the room. But there's no flame spits down so you don't need to worry about it. Then a flame spit goes down, it'll push it left. Then another, uh, and then a wind, oh the wind will push left, a flame spit goes out and you put it at the bottom of the room, the winds will push it down. Then the flame spit will go out. You put it on the right side. The winds will push it right. And that same pattern happens throughout the entire fight. It's uh, it's, it's counterclockwise the entire fight. Uh, so you, know, you see this was the second interrupting cloud cast. And I still have not taken any damage. You see me. I get flame spit. I use defensives. This flame spit does hurt a lot. So when you do get it, make sure you're actually using your defensives. So you saw me use barrier and mirror image, and I still hit got down to 36%. This is the first time that I have the interrupting cloud cast. I got locked. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm bad. You don't worry about that. So again, this was the one going right, so the next flame spit will go towards the front of the room because the winds will be going upwards. Um, so there is a kind of trick on this boss that you can milk out a little bit more more percent than normal. Um, I wouldn't worry about using any defensives for the interrupting spell, the interrupting cloud cast, unless you know you're going to die. There's two really bad overlaps when the mobs are actually joined together. Um. I believe it's the second one and the fourth one are really bad, but by the time you get the fourth one, if he's not dead, you're, it's most likely a wipe. Uh, so the trick to kind of milk the damage here is the boss will uh, basically phase. His next phase is when they, he drops down to the area over here and they combine together. He phase, They phase whenever either of the mobs, either Urquhart or Hiraka, the dragon itself, drop to 50% health. Um, so that's this portion right here. We're kind of milking it now. We get a lot of free percent here. We're also milking our thundering. Um, I probably should be lusting right here just to get max value out of it, but I ended up deciding to save lust for um, when they actually join together. Now this is where you're going to want to be using defensives. Um, so I actually ice blocked this first one. Um, you can pre-ice block. I wouldn't have really recommended that particularly. Um, you can pre-ice block, but not really. It's really good, especially later in the fight. It's probably, it's really good for the second one. The first one should be okay. Uh, you should just be able to use, you know, G and Viz and Alter Time or whatever if you need it. Um, and obviously a health pot. I'm pretty sure I do up, end up getting the second one, which I obviously have to use defensives for. Oh, I actually didn't get the second one. I alter time. I pre-alter timed thinking I was going to get the second one, and I didn't. Um, so now I'm a little bit in danger for the next one, other than the fact that I'll have ice block. Um, but after this point, as soon as you focus down the dragon, there's basically no more mechanics that are of worrisome to any DPS players. It's just the tank buster. Um, so now this is just a, a boss burn. Obviously, there's winds, so you need to dodge the fires, but there's no more fires going out. Um, so oh as long... God. As long as you dodge any of the fires that are existing, you basically kill the fight and your tank survives. Again, a very good fight for Frost Mage. It's basically two target cleave for a vast majority of the fight. Probably the same amount that it is for uh, the second boss, but...
Fucking yeah, mom. that's uh, that was the uh, the twenty five ruby again. Uh, this this the group's just using uh using no comms, or no no com gamers, but uh, yeah. I think this ended. This was like world like eightieth or something like that for ruby. Um, I can actually I can actually probably go look. Yeah, let's, let's actually go look what it is. It's now world 110. So I think at the time it was like world 80 world 81st or something like that. But at the time but uh but yeah, it's uh world 110 key and we're all we're obviously all doing this with uh, with no comms. So that's the uh that's the commentary for the uh the 20 the 25 tyrannical ruby with uh, with no comms. <laughs>